Beyond the Hills of Dream by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Beyond the Hills of Dream Over the mountains of sleep, my love, Over the hills of dream, Beyond the walls of care and fate, Where the loves and memories teem, We come to a world of fancy free, Where hearts forget to weep, over the mountains of dream, my love, over the hills of sleep. Over the hills of care, my love, over the mountains of dread, we come to a valley glad and vast, where we meet the long-lost dead. And there the gods in splendor dwell, in a land where all is fair. Over the mountains of dread, my love, over the hills of care. Over the mountains of dream, my love, Over the hills of sleep, Could we but come to that heart's desire, Where the harvest of fancy reap, Then we would know the old joys and hopes, The longings of youth's bright gleam. Over the mountains of sleep, my love, Over the hills of dream. Yea, there the sweet old years have rest, And there my heart would be, Amid the glad ones loved of yore, At the sign of the fancy free. And there the old lips would repeat Earth's memories o'er and o'er. Over the mountains of might have been, Over the hills of yore. Unto that valley of dreams, my love, If we could only go, Beyond the mountains of heart's despair, The hills of winter and snow, then we would come to those happy isles, Those shores of blossom and wing, Over the mountains of waiting, my love, Over the hills of spring. And there where the woods are scarlet and gold, And the apples are red on the tree, The heart of autumn is never old, In that country where we would be. And how would we come to that land, my love, Follow the midnight stars? That swim and gleam in a milk-white stream Over the night's white bars. Or follow the trail of the sunset red That beacons the dying deeps Of day's wild borders down the edge Of silence where evening sleeps. Or take the road that the morning wakes When he whitens his first rose beam Over the mountains of glory, my love, Over the hills of dream. Sometime, sometime, we will go, my love, When winter loosens to spring, And all the spirits of joy are ajog After the wild bird's wing. When winter and sorrow have opened their doors To set love's prisoners free, Over the mountains of woe, my love, Over the hills of dree. And when we reach there, we will know the faces we knew of yore, the lips that kissed, the hands that clasped, when memory loosens her store. And we will drink to the long dead years in that inn of the golden gleam, over the mountains of sleep, my love, over the hills of dream. And all the joys we missed, my love, and all the hopes we knew, the dreams of life we dreamed in vain, When youth's red blossoms blew, And all the hearts that throbbed for us In the past so sunny and fair, We will meet and greet in that golden land Over the hills of care. Over the mountains of sleep, my love, Over the hills of dream, Beyond the walls of care and fate, where the loves and memories teem. We come to a land of fancy free, Where hearts forget to weep. Over the mountains of dream, my love, Over the hills of sleep. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Morning by W. Wilford Campbell Read for LibriVox.org
Read by B. G. Gruff When I behold out of ruined night, Filled with all weirds of haunted ancientness, And dreams of fantasies of pale distress, Is built, beam by beam, the splendid light, The opalescent glory, gems belight, Of dew emblazoned morning, when I know such wondrous hopes, such luminous beauties grow from out earth's shades of sadness of fright. O oh, then, my heart, aim thy questioning fear. Dost thou not whisper, he who built us thus, from wrecks of darkness such wonders at his will, can recreate out of death's night for us the marvel of morning gladder still? Than ever trembling into beauty here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Out of Pompeii by William Wilfred Campbell. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. She lay face downward on her bended arm, in this her new sweet dream of human bliss. Her heart within her fearful, fluttering warm, Her lips yet pained with love's first timorous kiss. She did not note the darkening afternoon, She did not mark the lowering of the sky, Or that great city earth had given its boon, Unto her lips love touched her and passed by. In one dread moment all the sky grew dark, The hideous rain, the panic, the red rout, where love lost love, and all the world might mark, The city overwhelmed, blotted out. Without one cry so quick oblivion came, And life passed to the black where all forget, But she, we know not of her house or name, In love's sweet musings doth lie dreaming yet. The dread hell passed, the ruined world grew still, And the great city passed to nothingness, the ages went, and mankind worked its will. Then men stood still, amid the century's press, And in the ashed ruins opened bare, As she lay down in her shamed loveliness, Sculptured and frozen, late they found her there, Image of love, mid all that hideousness. Her head face downward on her bended arm, Her single robe that showed her shapely form, Her wondrous fate love keeps divinely warm, over the centuries past the slaying storm. The heart can read in writings time hath left, That linger still through death's oblivion, And in this waste of life and light bereft, She brings again a beauty that had gone. And if there be a day when all shall wake, As dreams the hoping, doubting human heart, The dim forgetfulness of death will break, For her is one who sleeps with lips apart. And did God call her suddenly, I know, She'd wake as morning wakened by the thrush, Feel that red kiss across the century's glow, And make all heaven rosier by her blush. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Morning on the Shore by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish the lake is blue with morning, and the sky sweet clear and burnished as an orient pearl. High in its vastness scream and skim and whirl wild gulf locks where the gleaming beaches die into dim distance where great marshes lie. Far in ashore the woods are warm with dreams, the dew at road in ruddy sunlight gleams. The sweet cool earth, the clear blue heaven on high. Across the morn a caroling schoolboy goes, Filling the world with youth to heaven's stare. Some chattering squirrel answers from his tree, But down beyond the headland, where ice flows are great in winter, Pleading in mute prayer, a dead drowned face stares up immutably end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Bereavement of the Fields by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Bereavement of the Fields In memory of Archibald Lampman, who died February 10, 1899 Soft fall the February snows, and soft falls on my heart the snow of wintry pain. For nevermore, by wood or field or croft, will he we knew walk with his loved again. No more, with eyes a dream and soul aloft, in those high moods where love and beauty reign, greet his familiar fields, his skies without a stain. Soft fall the February snows, and deep, like downy pinions from the molting breast of all the mothering sky, round his hushed sleep, flutter a million loves upon his rest, where once his well-loved flowers were fain to peep, with adder tongue and waxen petals pressed, in young spring evenings reddening down the west soft fall the february snows and hushed seems life's loud action all its strife removed afar remote where grief itself seems crushed and even hope and sorrow are reproved for he whose cheek erstwhile with hope was flushed, and by the gentle haunts of being moved, hath gone the way of all he dreamed and loved. Soft fall the February snows, and lost, this tender spirit gone with scarce a tear, ere, loosened from the dungeons of the frost, wakens with yearnings knew the enfranchised year late winter wizened gloomed and tempest tossed in hesper's gentle delicate veils appear when dream anew the days of hope and fear and mother nature she whose heart is fain yea she who grieves not neither faints nor fails Building the seasons she will bring again, March with rudening madness of wild gales, April and her wraiths of tender rain, and all he loved, the soul whom memory veils, beyond the burden of our strife and pain. Not his to wake the strident note of song, nor pierce the deep recesses of the heart those tragic wells remote of might and wrong but rather with those gentler souls apart he dreamed like his own summer days along filled with the beauty born of his own heart sufficient in the sweetness of his song outside this prison house of all our tears enfranchised from our sorrow and our wrong beyond the failure of our days and years beyond the burden of our saddest song he moves with those whose music filled his ears and claimed his gentle spirit from the throng wordsworth arnold keats thy masters of his song like some rare pan of those old grecian days here in our hours of deeper stress reborn unfortunate throne upon life's evil ways his inward ear heard ever that satyr horn from nature's lips reverberate night and morn and fled from men in all their troubled maze standing apart with sad and curious gaze and now, untimely cut, 
like some sweet flower plucked in the early summer of its prime before it reached the fullness of its dower he withers in the morning of our time leaving behind him like a summer shower a fragrance of earth's beauty and the chime of gentle and imperishable rhyme songs in our ears of winds and flowers and buds in gentle loves and tender memories of nature's sweetest aspects her pure moods wrought from the inward truth of intimate eyes and delicate ears of him who harks and broods and nightly pondering daily grows more wise and dreams and sees in mighty solitudes soft fall the february snows and soft he sleeps in peace upon the breast of her he loved the truest where by wood and croft the wintry silence folds in fleecy blur about his silence while in glooms aloft the mighty forest fathers without stir guard well the rest of him their rare sweet worshipper and a poem this recording is in the public domain a wood lyric by william wilfred campbell read for LibriVox.org by nemo a wood lyric into the stilly woods i go where the shades are deep and the wind flowers blow and the hours are dreamy and lone and long and the power of silence is greater than song into the stilly woods i go where the leaves are cool and the wind flowers blow when i go into the stilly woods and know all the flowers and their sweet shy hoods the tender leaves and their shimmer and sheen of darkling shadow diaphanous green in those haunted halls where my footstep falls like one who enters cathedral walls a spirit of beauty floods over me is over a swimmer the waves of the sea that strengthens and glories refreshes and fills till all mine inner heart wakens and thrills with a new and a glad and a sweet delight and a sense of the infinite out of sight of the great unknown that we may not know but only feel with an inward glow when into the great glad woods we go o oh, life-worn brothers come with me into the woods hush sanctity where the great cool branches are heavy with june and the voices of summer are strung in tune come with me o oh heart outworn o oh spirit whom life's brute struggles have torn come tired and broken and wounded feet where the walls are greening the flowers are sweet the roofs are breathing and heaven's airs meet come wash earth's grievings from out of the face the tear and the sneer in the warfare's trace come where the bells of the forest are ringing come where the oriole's nest is swinging where the brooks are foaming in amber pools the mornings are still and the noonday cools cast off earth's sorrows and know what i know when into the glad deep woods i go and a poem this recording is in the public domain an august reverie by william wilfred campbell read for LibriVox.org by nemo an august reverie there is an autumn scent subdues the air though it is august and the season still a part of summer in the woodlands fair i hear it in the humming of the mill 
I feel it in the rustling of the trees that scarcely shiver in the passing breeze. Tis but a touch of winter ere his time, a presaging of sleep and icy death, when skies are rich and fields are in their prime, and heaven and earth commingle in a breath, when hazy airs are stirred with gossamer wings, and in shorn fields the shrill cicada sings. So comes the slow revolving of the year, the glory of nature ripening to decay, when in those paths by which, through love's austere, all men and beasts and blossoms find their way. By steady easings of the spirit's dream, from sunlight past the pallid starlight's beam. Nor should the spirit sorrow as it passes, declining slowly by the heights it came. We are but brothers to the birds and grasses, and our brief coming and our end the same. And though we glory godlike in our day, perchance some kindred law their lives obey. There are a thousand beauties gathered round, the sounds of waters falling overnight, the morning scents that steamed from the fresh ground, the hair-like streaming of the morning light. Through early mist and dim, wet woods where brooks chatter, half seen, down under mossy nooks. The ragged daisy starring all the fields, the buttercup a brim with pallid gold, the thistle and burr flowers hedged with prickly shields, all common weeds the draggled pastures hold, with shriveled pods and leaves, are kin to me, like heirs of earth in her maturity. They speak a silent speech that is their own, these wise and gentle teachers of the grass, and when their brief and common days are flown, a certain beauty from the year doth pass, a beauty of whose light no eye can tell, save that it went, and my heart knew it well. I may not know each plant, as some men know them, as children gather beasts and birds to tame. But I went mid them as the winds that blow them, from childhood's hour, and loved without a name. There is more of beauty in a field of weeds than in all blooms the hothouse garden breeds. For they are nature's children, in their faces I see that sweet obedience to the sky that marks these dwellers of the wilding places who with the season's being live and die, knowing no love but of the wind and sun who still are nature's when their life is done. They are a part of all the haze-filled hours, the happy, happy world all drenched with light. The far-off chiming click-clack of the mowers, and yon blue hills whose mist elude my sight. And they to me will ever bring in dreams, far, mist-clad heights, and brimming rain-fed streams. In this dream August air, whose ripened leaf, pausing before it puts death's glories on, deepens its green, and the half-garnered sheaf gladdens the haze-filled sunlight. Love hath gone, beyond the material, trembling like a star, to those sure heights where all thought's glories are. And thought, that is the greatness of this earth, and man's most inmost being soars and soars beyond the eye's horizon's outmost girth garners all beauty on all mystery pours like some ethereal fountain in its flow finds heavens where the senses may not go and a poem this recording is in the public domain In the Spring Fields 
by William Wilfred Campbell, read for LibriVox.org by Tabarish. There dwells a spirit in the budding year, as motherhood doth beautify the face that even lends these barren leaves a grace and fills gray hours with beauty that were drear and bleak when the loud storming march was here a glamour that the thrilled heart dimly traces in swelling boughs and soft wet windy spaces and sunlands where the chattering birds make cheer i thread the uplands where the wind's footfalls stir leaves in gusty hollows autumn's urns see what the river's shining breast expands high in the windy pines a lone crow calls and far below some patient ploughman turns his great black furrow over steaming lands End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dryad by William Wilford Campbell. Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Bars. The Dryad. Her soul was sown with the seed of the tree of old when the earth was young, and glad with the light of its majesty the light of her beautiful being upgrew and the winds that swept over land and sea and like a harper the great boughs strung whispered her all things new the tree reached forth to the sun and the wind and towered to heaven above but she was the soul that under its rind whispered its joy through the whole wood span sweet and glad and tender and kind for her love for the tree was a holier love than the love of woman for man the seasons came and the seasons went and the woodland music rang and under her wide umbrageous tent hidden forever from mortal eye she sang earth's beauty and wonderment but men never knew the spirit that sang this music too wondrous to die only nature forever young and her children forever true knew the beauty of her who sung and her tender glad love for the tree till on her music the wild hawk hung from his eerie high in the blue to drink her melody free and the creatures of earth would creep from their haunts to stare with their wilding eyes to hearken those rhythms of earth's romance that never the ear of mortal hath heard till the elfin squirrels would caper and dance and the hedgehog's sleepy and shy surprise would grow to the thought of a bird and the pale wood flowers from their cradles of dew where they rocked them the whole night long while the dark wheeled round and the stars looked through into the great wood's slumberous breast till the gray of the night like a mist out blue hearkened the piercing joy of her song that sank like a star in their rest but all things come to an end at last when the wings of being are furled and there blew one night a maddening blast from those wastes where ships dismantle and drown that ravaged the forest and thundered past and in the wreck of that ruined world the dryad's tree went down when the pale stars dimmed their tapers of gold and over the night's round rim the day rose sullen and ragged and cold over that wind-swept desolate wild where the huge trunks lay like giants of old prone slain on some battlefield silent and grim the wood creatures curious 
mild, searching their solitudes, found her there. Like a snowdrift out in the morn, one lily arm round the beech trunk bare, one curved, cold, under her elfin head, with the beechen shine in her nut-brown hair, and the pallor of dawn on her face, love-lorn, beautiful, passionless, dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peniel by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons In a place of the mountains of Edom And a waste of the midnight shore When the evil winds of the desolate hills Beat with an iron roar With the pitiless black of the desert behind And the wrath of a brother before In a place of the ancient mountains And the time of the midnight dead Where the great white skies of his father's land loomed vastly overhead jacob the son of the ancient of days stood out alone with his dread and there in that place of darkness when the murk of the night grew dim under the wide roof tree of the world an unknown stood with him whether a devil or angel of god with presence hidden and grim and spake thou son of isaac on mountain and stream and tree and this wide ruined world of night take thy last look with me for out of the darkness have i come to die or conquer thee then jacob made stern answer until thy face i see though i strive with life or wrestle with death yet will i strive with thee for better it were to die this hour than from my fate to flee yea speak thy name or show thy face else shall i conquer thy will but the other closed with an iron shock till it seemed the stars so still with the lonely night in a wheeling mist went round by river and hill and jacob strove as the dying strive in the woe of that awful place yea he fought with the desperate soul of one who fights in evil case and he called aloud in the pauses dread o oh, give me sight of thy face yea speak thy name what art thou spirit or man or devil or god yea speak thy name but no voice came from heaven or deep or sod and the spirit of jacob clave to his flesh as the dews in a dried-up clod then they rocked and swayed as autumn storms do rock the century trees yea swayed and rocked that others strove and drave him to his knees and jacob felt the wide world's gleam and the roar of the unknown seas like to a mighty storm it seemed there thundered in his ears then a mighty rushing water teemed like brooks of human tears and opened the channels of his spent heart and washed away his fears and he rose with the last despairing strength of life's tenacity and he swore by the blood of man in him and god's eternity tis my life my very soul he wants that he shall not have of me then his heart grew strong and he felt the earth grow iron beneath his feet and he drank the balmy airs of night like rose blooms rare and sweet and his soul rose up as a welling brook his life or death to meet and he spake to that unknown enemy there by yon white stars i vow that be thou devil or angel or man thou canst not conquer me now for i feel new lease of life and strength in this sweat that beads my brow they locked once more the stars it seemed went round in dances dim where the great white watchers over each hill with the black night seemed to swim but jacob knew his enemy now could never more conquer him yea still with grip of death they strove in iron might until planet by planet the great stars dropped down over the westward hill and jacob stood like one who stands in the strength of a mighty will then at that late last midnight hour when the little birds rejoice and out of the lands of sleep life looms 
with the rustle of day's annoys that other spake as one who speaks with a sad despairing voice and cried aloud i have met my fate loosen and let me go for i have striven with thee in vain till my heart is water and woe nay nay cried jacob we strive we twain till the mists of dawning blow then spake that other i hate thee not my spirit is spent alas thou art a very lion of men release and let me pass for thou hast my heart and sinews ground as ocean grinds his grass then answered jacob nay nay thou liar this is the lock of death for thee or me it must be thus the will of my being saith thou man or devil i hold thee here unto thy latest breath for i do feel in thee i hold my life's supremest hour i would as lief let all life slip as thee from out of my power until i gaze on thy hid face and read my spirit's dower yea show thy face or who thou art or man or angel or fiend i rend thy being fold from fold and scatter thee to the wind then they twain rocked as passions rock when madness wrecks the mind for each now knew this was the end and one of them must die then jacob heaved a mighty breath with a last great sobbing cry and gripped that other in a grip like the grip of those who die for he felt once more his spirit faint and his strong knees quake beneath and it seemed the mountains flamed all red at the coming of his breath and he prayed if he were conquered now that this might be his death the tight grip eased the huge form slipped back earthward with a moan and jacob stood there neath the dawn like one new changed to stone for in the face of the prone man there he read his very own not as man sees who reads his fellows in the dim crowds that pass nor as a soul may know himself who looks within a glass but as god sees who kneads the clay and parts it from the mass and over his head the great day rose and gloried leaf and wing and the little boughs began to tremble and the little birds to sing but on his face there shone a strength like the power of a new crowned king and a poem this recording is in the public domain afterglow by campbell read for labor box read by stacy simon after the clangor of battle there comes a moment of rest and the simple hopes and the simple joys and the simple thoughts are best after the victor's pain, after the thunder of gun, there comes a lull that must come to all before the set of the sun. Then what is the happiest memory? Is it the foe's defeat? Is it the splendid praise of a world that thunders by at your feet? Nay, nay, to the life-worn spirit, the happiest thoughts are those that carry us back to the simple joys and the sweetness of life's repose. A simple love and a simple trust and a simple duty done are truer torches to light to death than a whole world's victories won. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tree of Truth by William Wilfred Campbell. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Tree of Truth. There grows a mighty century tree, its roots athwart the world, its branches wide as earth's wide girth, by thousand dews impearled. Its top is hoary, its wide boughs reach out to heaven above, its roots are knowledge, and its sap the yearning heart of love. Men hack its branches, curb its roots, to trim it to their ken, or hide its green and poisonous vines from evil's grimace fen. But evermore, while ages wane, and centuries rise and die, through dark, through light, through good and ill, it saps the years defy. 
for deeper in the heart of things and older far than time its roots are fixed in those sure deeps from which the centuries climb ages ago its girth was great its boughs o'er earth's wide lands all peoples gathered neath its glades where now old ruin stands but form and custom staled its green and curbed it into bounds of pruning hooks and greedy walls that hemmed its sacred rounds and vast and wide where once to all its radiant leaves were free far peoples paid with earth's red gold its sacred home to see and summer by summer yea year by year still lower shrank its head till shallow deceit and life's despair declared its heart was dead then men cried we will hew it down and build from out its wood a temple rare wherein to teach us memory of its good and neath its shelter we will keep to hold the age's youth those holy dreams our fathers drew from out the tree of truth they hacked and hewed they sawed and planed they lopped its branches wide till shorn and bare the old tree stood to every wind and tide and round its scathed and ruined trunk whence life has fled aloof they built a temple carved and arched from floor to groined roof and reared a shrine where art was all the end of human pain till a sprout shot forth from the old tree's trunk and burst its walls amain a sturdy wayward wilding growth that mocked their maimed dream of life and truth and legend carved on groined arch and beam men stood amazed the teachers cried behold the curse of earth its life must die or all our words are but as nothing worth nay nay cried others but let it stand perchance a miracle then straight about its burgeoning boughs old bloody battles fell wild clamour and clash of fiery arms the old against the new mad host arrayed with banner and blade where war's wild trumpets blew but as they strove by gates of blood with glad unconscious youth higher and wider skyward climbed the newer tree of truth and blithe within its boughs their nests the birds of heaven made while at its foot mid earth's old runes the happy children played and form and cant were swept away while under its dream sublime men drank anew neath heaven's arch from nature for a time yea still it spreads its antres vast through peace and clash of arms and blossoms brave and blithe and free o'er all earth's shrunk alarms and still men battle to destroy the living for the dead old ruined trunk of that which towers its glories overhead and strive for art's distorted ways while from earth's heart of youth higher and wider heavenward spreads the ancient tree of truth and a poem this recording is in the public domain glory of the dying day by william wilfred campbell read for librivox.com by stacy trottier on july 22nd 2017 in solana beach california o oh, glory of the dying day that into darkness fades away o oh, violet splendor melting down by river bend o'er tower and town o oh, glory of the dying day that into darkness fades away o oh, splendor of the gates of night o oh, majesty of dying light that all a molten glory glows till purple crimson fades to rose and dying melting outward goes in ashes on the even's rim when all the world grows faint and dim o silvern sound of far-off bells ringing ringing miles away over river fields and fells round the crimson and the gray pealing softly evening out as the dewy dusk comes down 
and the great night folds about river woodlands hills and town o glory of the fading hills splendor of the river's breast o silence that the whole world fills sanctity of peaceful rest alien from the care of day now a petalled star peeps in now night's choruses begin musical and far away o glory of the dying day when my life's evening fades away may it in splendid peace go down like yours o'er river bend and town not into silence blind and stark not into wintry muffled dark but heralded by stars divine may my life's latest evening ray melt into such a night as thine end of poem this recording is in the public domain September in the Laurentian Hills by William Wilfred Campbell, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Already winter, in his sombre round, before his time hath touched these hills austere with lonely flame. Last night, without a sound, the ghostly frost walked out by wood and mare. And now the sumac curls his frond of fire the aspen tree reluctant drops his gold and down the gullies the north's wild vibrant lyre rouses the bitter armies of the cold o'er this short afternoon the night draws down with ominous chill across these regions bleak wind-bitten gold the sunset fades around the purple loneliness of crag and peak leaving the world an iron house wherein no love no life no hope hath ever been end of poem this recording is in the public domain lazarus by william wilford campbell read for librivox dot org by larry wilson o father abram i can never rest here in thy bosom in the whitest heaven where love blooms on through days without an even for up through all the paradises seven there comes a cry from some fierce anguished breast a cry that comes from out of hell's dark night a piercing cry of one in agony that reaches me here in heaven white and high a call of anguish that doth never die like dream-waked infant wailing for the light o oh, father abram heaven is love and peace and god is good eternity is rest sweet would it be to lie upon thy breast and know no thought but loving to be blest save for that cry that never more will cease it comes to me above the angel lyres the chanting praises of the cherubim it comes between my upward gaze and him all blessed christ a voice from the vague din o oh, lazarus come and ease me of these fires o oh, lazarus i have called thee all these years it is so long for me to reach to thee across the ages of this mighty sea that loometh dark dense like eternity which i have bridged by anguish to prayers and tears which i have bridged by knowledge of god's love that even penetrates this anguished glare a gleaming ray a tremulous star-built stair a road by which love-hungered souls may fare past hate and doubt to heaven and god above so calleth it ever upward unto me it creepeth in through heaven's golden doors it echoes all along the sapphire floors like smoke of sacrifice it soars and soars it fills the vastness of eternity until my sense of love is waned and dimmed the music round its spheres do clash and jar no more those spirit calls from star to star those harmonies that float and melt afar those belts of light by which all heaven is rimmed no more i hear the beat of heavenly wings the seraph chanting in my rest-tuned ear i only know a cry a prayer a tear 
that rises from the depths up to me here a soul that to me suppliant leans and clings o father abram thou must bid me go into the spaces of the deep abyss where far from us and our god-given bliss do dwell those souls that have done christ amiss for through my rest i hear that upward woe i hear it crying through the heavenly night when curved hung in space the million moons lean planetward and infinite space attunes itself to silence as from drear gray dunes a cry is heard along the shuddering light of wild dusk bird a sad heart-curdling cry so comes to me that call from out hell's coasts i see an infinite shore with gaping ghosts this is no heaven with all its shining hosts this is no heaven until that hell doth die so spake the soul of lazarus and from thence like new-fledged bird from its sun-jewelled nest drunk with the music of the young year's quest he sank out into heaven's gloried breast spaceward turned toward darkness dim immense hellward he moved like a radiant star shot out from heaven's blue with rain of gold at even when orion's train and that mysterious seven move on in mystic range from heaven to heaven hellward he sank followed by radiant rout the liquid floor of heaven bore him up with unseen arms as in his feathery flight he floated down toward the infinite night and each way downward on the left and right he saw each moon of heaven like a cup of liquid misty fire that shone afar from sentinel towers of heaven's battlements but onward winged by love's desire intense and sank space swallowed into the immense while with him ever widened heaven's bar tis ages now long gone since he went out christ urged love driven across the jasper walls but hellward still he ever floats and falls and ever nearer come those anguished calls and far behind he hears a glorious shout end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Mother by William Wilford Campbell Read for LibriVox.org It was April, blossoming spring. They buried me when the birds did sing. Earth, in clammy wedging earth, did bank my bed with the black damp there. Under the damp and under the mould I kenned my breasts were clammy and cold. Out from red beams, slanting and bright i ken my cheeks were sunken and white i was a dream and the world was a dream and yet i kenned all things that seem i was a dream and the world was a dream but you cannot bury a red sunbeam for though in the undergrave's doom night i lay all silent and stark and white yet over my head i seemed to know the murmurous moods of the wind and snow the snows that wasted the wind that blew the rays that slanted the clouds that drew the water ghosts up from lakes below and the little flower souls in the earth that grow under earth in the grey stark night i felt the star and the moon's pale light i felt the winds of ocean and land that whispers the blossoms soft and bland though they had buried me dark and low my soul with the seasons seemed to grow from throes of pain they buried me low from death had finished a mother's woe but under the sod in the grey stripped doom i dreamed of my baby in glimmer and gloom i dreamed of my baby and I can that his rest was broken in wailing on my dead breast. I dreamed that a rose leaf hand did cling. Oh, you cannot bury a mother in spring. When the winds are soft and the blossoms are red, she could not sleep in a cold earth bed. 
I dreamed of my baby for a day and a night, and then I rose in my grave clothes white. I rose like a flower from my damp earth bed to the world of suffering overhead. Men would have called me a thing of harm, but dreams of my baby made me rosy and warm. I felt my breast swell under my shroud. No stars show white, no winds were loud, but I stole me past the graveyard wall, where the voice of my baby seemed to call, and I can leave a voice, though my lips were dumb. Hush, baby, hush, for mother is come. I passed the street to my husband's home. The chamber says, in a dream I clung. I heard the sound of each sleeper's breath. Light waves that break on the shores of death. I listened a space and my clam chamber door, then stole like a moon ray over its floor. My baby was asleep on a stranger arms. Oh, baby, my baby, the grave is so warm, though dark and so deep, for mother is there. Oh, come with me from the pain and care. Oh, come with me from the anguish of earth. Where the bed is banked with the blossoming girl, where the pillow is soft and the rest is long, and mother will croon you a slumber song, a slumber song that will charm your eyes to a sleep that never in earth song lies. The loves of earth your being can't spare, but never the grave for mother is there. I nestled him soft to my throbbing breast. And I stole me back to my long, long rest. And there I lie with him under the star, dead to earth, its peace and its walls, dead to its hates, its hopes, its arms, so long as a cradle up soft in my arms. And heavens may open its shimmering doors, and saints make music on pearly floors. And hell may yawn to its infinite sea, but they never can take my baby from me. For so much a part of my soul he hath grown, that God doth know of its high on his throne. And here I lie with him under the flowers, the sun winds rock through the billowy hours, with the night airs that steal from the murmuring sea. Bringing sweet peace to my baby and me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dusk by W. Wilford Campbell. Read for LiverVox.org. Read by B. G. Gruff on July eleventh, two thousand seventeen. Down by the shore, the even. When the waves lap lightly on their reedy rims, and soft, one trembling star, a blossom, flames aloft, where the sunk sun the western haven laves, with the lowest tide of day, the tired world craves for the great night that cometh brooding in, with draught of healing o'er earth's far din, and blessed rest that recreates and saves. Far in the breathing woods, the whip poor will reiterates his plaintive note. And hark, a dusky night hawk whirls athwart the dark, haunting the shadows, till in silver swoon, haunted by her own spirit, strange and still, over the water comes the wan white moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Prayer by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Marcel D. Ward, TheSoulExpands.com Master of life, the day is done. My son of life is sinking low. I watch the hours slip one by one, and hark the night wind and the snow. And must thou shut the morning out, and dim the eye that love to see? Silence the melody en route, and seal the joys of earth for me? And must thou banish all the hope 
the large horizon's eagle swim, the splendor of the far-off slope that ran about the world's great rim, that rose with morning's crimson rays and grew to noonday's glory dome, melting to even's purple haze when all the hopes of earth went home? Yea, master of this ruined house, the mortgage close outruns the lease, long since is hushed the gay carouse, and now the window lights must cease. The door's all barred, the shutters up, dismantled, empty, wall and floor. And now, for one grim eve to sup, with death, the bailiff at the door. Yea, I will take the gloomward road, where fast the arctic nights set in, to reach the bourne of that abode which thou hast kept for all my kin. And all life's splendid joys forego, walled in with night and senseless stone, if at the last my heart might know through all the dark one joy alone yea thou mayst quench the latest spark of life's weird day's expectancy roll down the thunders of the dark and close the light of life for me melt all the splendid blue above and let these magic wonders die if thou wilt only leave me love and love's heart brother memory Though all the hopes of every race crumbled in one red crucible and melted mingled into space yet master thou wert merciful end of poem this recording is in the public domain pan the fallen by william wilfred campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Pan the Fallen He wandered into the market With pipes and goatish hoof He wandered in a grotesque shape And no one stood aloof For the children crowded around him The wives and greybeards too To crack their jokes and have their mirth And see what Pan would do the pan he was they knew him part man but mostly beast who drank and lied and snatched what bones men threw him from their feast who seemed in sin so merry so careless in his woe that men despise scarce pitied him and still would have it so he swelled his pipes and thrilled them and drew the silent tear he made the gravest clack with mirth by his sardonic leer he blew his pipes full sweetly at their amused demands and caught the scornful earth-flung pence that fell from careless hands he saw the mob's derision and took it kindly too and when an epithet was flung a coarser back he threw but under all the masking of a brute unseemly part i looked and saw a wounded soul and a godlike breaking heart and back of the elfin music the burlesque clownish play i knew a wail that the weird pipes made a look that was far away a gaze into some far heaven whence a soul had fallen down but the mob only saw the grotesque beast in the antics of the clown for scant flung pence he paid them with mirth and elfin play till tired for a time of his antics queer they passed and went their way then there in the empty market he ate his scanty crust and tired face turned to heaven down he laid him in the dust and over his wild strange features a softer light there fell and on his worn earth-driven heart a peace ineffable and the moon rose over the market but pan the beast was dead while pan the god lay silent there with his strange distorted head and the people when they found him stood still with awesome fear no more they saw the beast's rude hoof the furtive clownish leer 
but the lightest spirit in that throng went silent from the place for they knew the look of a god released that shone from his dead face and a poem this recording is in the public domain the vengeance of saki by william wilford campbell read for LibriVox.org by marcel d ward the soul expands dot com when the moon is red in the heaven and under the night is heard on the winds the thunder of shadowy horses then out of the night i arise and again am a woman and leap to the back of an ebon steed that knows me and hound him on in the wake of hoofs that thunder of smoky nostrils and gleaming eyes and foam-flecked flanks that glow and flash in the flow of the moonlight while under the murk and the moon out into the blackness round the world's edge with an eerie mad echoing laughter leaps the long cry of the hate of the wild snake woman ha ha it is joy for the hearts that we crush as we thunder ho ho for the hate of the winds that laugh to my laughter ha ha it is well for the shriekings that pass into silence as under the night out into the blackness forever rise the wild hate of saki the mad snake woman i was a girl of the south with eyes as tender and dreamy and soft and true as the skies of my people but i was a slave and an alien captured in battle and brought to the north by a people ruder and stronger who held me as naught but a toy to be played with and broken then thrown aside like a bow that is snapped asunder lithe and supple my limbs as the sinuous serpent and quick as the eye and the tongue of the serpent mine anger that flashed out the fire of my hate on the scorn of my scorners but hate soon softened to love as fire into sunlight when my eyes met the eyes of the chieftain my lord and my master sweet as the flowers that bloom on the blossoming prairie gladder than voices of fountains that dance in the sunlight were the new and tremulous fancies that dwelt in my bosom for he was my king and my son and the power of his glance to me as at springtime the returning sun to the landscape and his touch and the sound of his voice that set my heart throbbing sweet were the days of the summer i dwelt in his tent and glad and loving the nights that i lay on his bosom but woe 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 to the summer that fades into autumn and woe upon woe is the love that dwindles and dies and ere my hot heart was a brim with its summer of loving i knew that his autumn had come that his love was another's a blue-eyed haughty captive they brought from the east her hair like moving sunlight that rippled and ran with the golden flow of a brook from her brow to her girdle he saw her he looked on her face and i was forgotten yea i and the love that fed on my soul in his anguish ha ha it is joy for the hearts that we crush as we thunder ho ho for the hate of the winds that laugh to my laughter ha ha it is well for the shriekings that pass into silence as under the night out into the darkness forever rise the wild hate of saki the mad snake woman i bowed my head with its woe to him in my anguish i veiled my face in my hair like the night of my sorrow and i played with him there by the love that was true and forgiving oh my lord and my love by the days 
that are past of our loving oh slay thy poor psyche but send her not forth in her anguish and i fell to the earth with my face like the moon hid in heaven in the folds of my hair but he sate there and uttered no answer and the white woman sate there and scorned at the woe of my sorrow then i bit my tongue through that it prayed for the pity ungiven and i rose with my head in my eyes like the lightning in heaven that leaps red to kill with a hiss like the snake that they called me and i looked on them there and i cursed them the man and the woman the man whose lips had kissed my love into being and the woman whose beauty had withered that love into ashes with curses so dread and so deep that he rose up and smote me and hounded me forth like a dog to die in the desert ha ha it is joy for the hearts that we crush as we thunder ho ho for the hate of the winds that laugh to my laughter ha ha it is well for the shriekings that pass into silence as under the night out into the blackness forever rise the wild hate of saki the mad snake woman then wandered i forth an outcast hounded and beaten careless whither i went or living or dying with that load of despair at my heart strings wearing to madness long and loud i laughed at the heaven that mocked me with its beautiful sounds and its sights and the joy of its being for i longed but to die and to go to that region of darkness where i might shroud me and curse in my madness forever far oh far i fled till my feet were wounded and bruised and cut by the ways unkindly and cruel then all the world grew red in the sun as a furnace and i raved till i knew no more for a horrible season then i arose and stood like one in a dream who after long years of forgetting sudden remembers the dread wild cry of a wrong that clamors for writing then sending a curse to the heart of the night sky i turned me and fled like the wind of the winter the sound of whose footstep is vengeance late when the moon had lowered i entered his village and threading the silent streets came to the well-known tent door and dragging aside the skins with serpentine motion entered now as a thief where once i had entered as a mistress and there in the gleam of the moon with the flame of her hair on his bosom lay the woman i hated like hell with the man i loved clasped to her heart ha ha it is joy for the hearts that we crush as we thunder ho ho for the hate of the winds that laugh to my laughter ha ha it is well for the shriekings that pass into silence as under the night out into the blackness forever rise the wild hate of saki the mad snake woman if hate could have slain they'd have shriveled up there in the moonlight but theirs was a sin too deep for the kiss of a knife blade long did i stand like a poison wind in a desert gray and sad and despairing and nursing my hate when out of the night like one voice that calls to another came the far-off neigh of a horse and a mad joy leaped to my veins and a thought curled into my heart as a serpent coils into a flower and i turned me and left them there in their foolish love and their slumber that my hot heart hissed was their last then hurrying out of the door that flapped in the night wind i fled with the pent-up hunger of hate that maddened to burst from its sluices and came to a place on the plain far up and out from the village where tethered in rows of hurdles champing and restless and neighing half a thousand horses were herded 
under the night. Ha ha! I live it anew. I dream it again in my madness. I see that moving ocean of shimmering flanks in the moonlight. I snatch a brand from a watch fire that smolders and dwindles. I creep around to the side of the herd remote from the village. I cry a low call that is answered by a neigh and a whinny. Then I leap to the back of an ebon stallion that knows me. Tis but the cut of a thong, a cry in the night, a fiery waving brand, like lightning to thunder. A terrified moaning and neighing, a heaving of necks and of haunches, a bound, a rush, a crack of a thong, then a whirlwind of hoofs. Like a sweep of a wave on a beach, we are thundering onwards, neck and neck in the wake of my hate, that ever before us clamors from heaven to hell in its terrible vengeance. With neck outstretched and mad eyes agleam in the moonlight, I see on ahead the sleeping huts in the moonlight. Ha ha! They will rest well under the sleep that we bring them. See? See? We are nearing them now. The first wild thundering hoofbeats have ridden them down mid the shriekings and groanings of anguish, blotting them out with their loves and their hates into blackness. Ha ha! Ride! Ride, my beauties, my terrible tramplers! Pound! Pound it to dust the mother, the child, and the husband! Pound! Pound to the pulse of my hate that exults in your thunders! Ha! Over the little ones nestled to suckle the bosom! Over the man that I loved, we thunder, we thunder. Over the woman I hate, with the flame of her hair on his bosom, trampling, treading them down out into silence and blackness, like the swirl of a merciless storm, we sweep on to darkness forever. And now, when the moon is in heaven and under the night, is heard on the winds the thunder of shadowy horses. Then out of the dark I rise and again am a woman. And leap to the back of an ebon steed that knows me. And hound him on in the wake of hoofs that thunder. While under the murk and the moon out into the blackness. Round the world's edge with an eerie mad echoing laughter. Leaps the long cry of the hate of the wild snake woman. Ha ha! It is joy for the hearts that we crush as we thunder. Ho ho! For the hate of the winds that laugh to my laughter. Ha ha! It is well for the shriekings that pass into silence. As under the night, out into the blackness forever, rides the wild hate of Saki, the mad snake woman. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish Love came at dawn when all the world was fair, When crimson glories, bloom and song were rife. Love came at dawn when hope's wings fanned the air, and murmured, I am life. Love came at even when the day was done, When heart and brain were tired and slumber pressed. Love came at eve, shut out the sinking sun, And whispered, I am rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Victoria by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte Jubilee Ode, A.D. 1897 With thunder of cannon and far-off roll of drum And martial music blaring forth her glory 
Mid miles of thronging millions down each street, Where all the earth is bound in one heart beat, The world's great empire's greatest queen doth come, Born on one mighty, rocking earthquake voice, Wherein all peoples of wide earth rejoice. She comes, she comes, to beat of martial drums, And pageants blazoning England's ancient story, The good grey queen, whose majesty and worth Have lent their radiance to remotest earth. While the splendour and might and power of Her mighty empire bound her, and the serried millions mad with joy are near her all to love her none to fear her but nearer far than power than splendour dearer the surging love of her loved people round her she comes she comes encircled by her people while praise to heaven peals out from tower and steeple into the great cathedral hushed and dim with thankful heart and humble queenly head over the sleep of england's mighty dead to render up her heart's best thoughts to him the king of kings mid hush of priestly tread and gloried anthems solemn pealing him the mighty millions awed now bow the head. Thank heaven for her simple, noble life. Earth's queenliest empress, mother, daughter, wife. Thank heaven for all she held her dearest own. Forgiveness for the weakness she hath known. Blessings on her wise old widowed head. For what her life is now, and what her life hath been, Noble mother, wife, and queen. Let the mighty organs roll, and the mighty throng disperse, She is ours, and we are hers, and both are Britons, Both to Britain's God, lift up the heartfelt praise For the might of splendid days. For the glory that hath been. Let the cannon thunder out, And the miles of voices shout, Victoria! Let the bells peal out afar, Till the rocket tells the star, And the ocean shouts its paean To the thunder answering bar. England's glory, Britain's pride, Revered of half the world beside, O good grey queen Victoria. Daughter of monarchs, mother of kings, All her sorrows we have shared, All her triumphs they are ours. Kind heaven, that virtue still endowers, Be with her, may her path be flowers, be with her, may her days be spared. Death aloof with shadowing wings unto nature's latest hours. Daughter of monarchs, mother of kings, O oh good grey queen Victoria. Let all feuds of faction die, let the blaring party bugles cease to blow. Let insincere and base detraction lie, With sore defeat and bitterness, Her carping, sisters low. In this one supremest hour, Day of Britain's ancient power, Day of all her golden dower, Of victory towering centuries, Tower on tower, let all our hatreds be forgot, all bitterness be swept away, remembering only the glory of our lot in this century honouring day. Celt and Scot and Saxon, let us only know 
a mighty queen comes to her own at last her people's love and reverence as the glow of some splendid western heaven deepening into richer even ere it purples to the vast past the mailed gates of fears the hooded menace of the years where rang the iron voices rolling on her ears of royal dreams the requiem and pal and awful fates of thrones foredoomed to fall our aged queen on this glad day she stands amid the throbbings of her land's great love firm in her rule her faith in god above earth's golden keys of happiness in her hands o oh, splendid life of britain's splendid days o oh, noble soul above all blame or praise o oh, fame that will outlast our little fame o oh, long enduring honour greater than time or death O oh, name that will outlive even that immortal name, England's most ancient glory, the great Elizabeth. And we, thy loyal subjects far away, in these new lands that own thy sceptre's sway, betwixt thy royal isle and far Cathay, across the thunder of the western foam, O oh, good grey queen, our hearts go home, go home to thee and thine. We are thine own while empires rise and wane. We are thine own for blessing or for bane. And come the shock of thundering war again, for death or victory. Not that we hate our brothers to the south, they are our fellows in the speech of mouth. They are our wedded kindred, our own blood, the same world evils we and they would stood. Our aims are theirs, one common future good. Not that we hate them, but that there doth lie within our hearts a golden fealty to Britain, 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 till the world doth die and him we send thee as our greatest son the people's choice to whose firm hand is given the welfare of our country under heaven no truer son hast thou in all thy coasts no wiser kindlier stronger britain boasts our knightly leader norman in his blood but truest Britain in heart and speech and mind, beloved well of all his fellow kind, in statesmanship our nation's highest mood, our silver tongued and golden hearted one, in every inch and every thought a man, our noblest type, ideal Canadian. Receive him mid those greatest thou dost own thy mighty empire builders bastioning round thy throne o england's latest greatest queen greatness more great than all her greatness that have been under thy sceptre the outmost continents hang and trackless oceans thunder out their surges these are thy realms never in earth's old story hath queen of earthly realm owned such resplendent glory not golden homer such wondrous kingdom sang round earth's wide girdle thy mighty empire verges out splendouring all prophecy of olden days thou latest and greatest on that throne whose base withstood the shock of centuries still withstands the lowering hate of europe's iron bands 
in thy true keeping shall that sceptre be a golden wand of happiness to the free who call thee queen from outmost sea to sea that throne to them a mighty lighthouse tower a truth compelling majesty of light blinding the mists of ignorance and night where round its base throughout the centuries flight thunder in vain earth's hosts upon its iron power End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. England by William Wilfred Campbell, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. England, 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 girdled by ocean and skies, and the power of a world, and the heart of a race, and a hope that never dies england 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 wherever a true heart beats wherever the rivers of commerce flow wherever the bugles of conquest blow wherever the glories of liberty grow tis the name that the world repeats and ye who dwell in the shadow of the centuries sculptured piles where sleep our century honoured dead while the great world thunders overhead and far out miles on miles beyond the smoke of the mighty town the blue thames dimples and smiles not yours alone the glory of old of the splendid thousand years of britain's might and britain's right and the brunt of british spears not yours alone for the great world round ready to dare and do scot and celt and norman and the dane with the northman's sinew and heart and brain and the northman's courage for blessing or bane are england's heroes too north and south and east and west wherever their triumphs be their glory goes home to the ocean-girt isle where the heather blooms and the roses smile with the green isle under her lee and if ever the smoke of an alien gun should threaten her iron repose shoulder to shoulder against the world face to face with her foes scot and celt and saxon are one where the glory of england goes and we of the newer and vaster west where the great war banners are furled and commerce hurries her teeming hosts and the cannon are silent along our coasts saxon and gaul canadian claim a part in the glory and pride and aim of the empire that girdles the world england 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 wherever the daring heart by arctic flow or torrid strand thy heroes play their part for as long as conquest holds the earth or commerce sweeps the sea by orient jungle or western plain will the saxon spirit be and whatever the people that dwell beneath or whatever the alien tongue over the freedom and peace of the world is the flag of england flung till the last great freedom is found and the last great truth be taught till the last great deed be done and the last great battle is fought till the last great fighter is slain in the last great fight and the war-wolf is dead in his den england breeder of hope and valour and might iron mother of men yea england 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 till honour and valour are dead till the world's great cannons rust till the world's great hopes are dust till faith and freedom be fled 
till wisdom and justice have passed to sleep with those who sleep in the many chambered vast till glory and knowledge are charnelled dust in dust to all that is best in the world's unrest in heart and mind you are wed while out from the indian jungle to the far canadian snows over the east and over the west over the worst and over the best the flag of the world to its winds unfurled the blood-red ensign blows end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sebastian Cabot by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Marcel D. Ward Thursday, August 10th, 2017 My website is thesoulexpands.com 1. New startled from her sensual dreams Europa half expectant lay Revolving dimly broken gleams Of some far off unrisen day As one sees through dim mists of night Some far Majestic moon paved mountain way. On grim and barbarous couch reclined, groped blindly toward her ultimate goal. When she through midnight of the mind would wake to knowledge of her soul, so with oppressions all divine she left her bestial gods behind and turned her toward the western stars. When this old rugged, princely tar of tars beat bravely out, where heaving leagues on leagues billowed the western brine. Two. greater than power or splendor or birth or might of gold is the noble life of a noble man of a heart both brave and bold all honor to the spirit that knows not earth's defeat that meets with courage true and strong what brave souls have to eat and honor to the hero who centuries ago sailed out from old bristol into the trackless waters of the west who bravely beat and beat where sky and waters meet till he saw his white cliffs vanish under ocean's heaving breast nor cowardly turned him back but held straight on his track though old ocean rose up ravening in gray and angry rack and bravely beat and bore up to the west all honor to his spirit for the glories we inherit in peace of mighty slumber breathe calmly round his rest where his earthy bed about his pillowed head forever beats old ocean's monotone for even from a child he loved its voices wild its splendid throb that made his heart its own three i dream his name and there doth come to me a vision of league-long breakers landward hurled, of olden ships far beating out to sea, of splendid shining wastes of heat and green far stretching round the world, of many voices heard from many lands, torrid and arctic, orient and the line, of heaving of vast anchors vanishing strands, and over all the wonder and thunder and wash of the loud world-conquering brine, of sky-rim waste, or fog and shrouded reef, where some mad siren ever sings the grief of all the mighty wrecks in that weird span since ocean and time began. Four. Venice and England cradled. Could this seaman be other than ocean's child? With heart less restless. Than that vast and wild great heart of the thrilling sea? Waken to her long thunders cradled in her soft voice, could other voice of all earth voices sweet make his stern heart rejoice? Yea, this was better than all, greater than all to him, truer than youth's mad whim, the only love of his youth, the only lore of his age, to gaze on her vast tumultuous scroll, to pour on her wrinkled page for he was very soul of her soul and she meet mother for him five 
over the hazy distance beyond the sunset's rim forever and forever those voices called to him westward 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 the sea sang in his head at morn in the busy harbor at nightfall on his bed westward 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 over the line of breakers out of the distance dim forever the foam white fingers beckoning beckoning him six this was no common spirit this sailor of old bristol not one of the martinaid helots such as the world doth know but a bronzed and rugged veteran adrift in the vanguard's flow a son of the world's great highway where the mighty storm winds blow seven all honor to this grand old pilot whose flag is struck whose sails are furled whose ship is beached whose voyage ended who sleeps somewhere inside unknown without a slab without a stone in that great island sea impearled yea reverence with honor blended for this old seaman of the past who braved the leagues of ocean hurled who out of danger knowledge rended and built the bastion sure and fast of that great bridgeway grand and vast of golden commerce around the world all honor yea a day shall come if glory lives in human rhyme when our poor faltering lips are dumb a greater and more splendid time when larger men of mightier aim shall do meet honor to his name yea honor only greatness keeps in the sanctuary where this seaman sleeps this old venetian britain born who held of fear a hero scorn who nailed his colors to the mast who sought in reverence for the true and found it in the rifting blue of those broad furrows of the vast who knew no honors held no state but in his ruggedness was great who like some sea shell in him felt the universe of ocean dwelt whose whole true being nature cast like his own ocean spaces vast eight yea he is dead this mighty seaman four long centuries ago beating westward ever westward beating out from old bristow saw he far in visions lifted down the golden sunset's glow through the bars of twilight rifted all the glories that we know beating westward ever westward over heaving leagues of brine buffeted by arctic scurries languid trade winds from the line with a courage heaven gifted and a fortitude divine yea he is dead but who shall say that all the splendid deeds he wrought that all the lofty truths he taught if truth be knowledge nobly sought are dead and vanished quite away nay nay he lives and such as he in every lofty human dream in every true sublimity that splendors earth and makes it teem with inward might and majesty this grand old pilot of bristol incarnate comes to earth again as when four hundred years ago he swept in storm and shine and snow athwart the thunders of the main nine greater far than shaft or storied fame than bronze and a marble blint greater than all the honors he could gain from a nation's high intent he sleeps alone in his great isle unknown with the chalk cliffs all around him for his mighty graveyard stone and the league-long sounding roar of old ocean forevermore beating beating about his rest for fane and monument end of poem this recording is in the public domain The World Mother by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Marcel D. Ward TheSoulExpands.com By crag and lonely moor 
she stands this mother of half a world's great men and kins them far by sea-rack lands or orient jungle or western fen and far out mid the mad turmoil or where the desert places keep their lonely hush her children toil or wrapped in wide world honor sleep by egypt's sands or western wave she kins her latest hero's rest with scotland's honor o'er each grave and britain's flag above each breast and some at home her mother love keeps crooning wind songs o'er the graves where Arthur's castle looms above, or Strathy storms, or Solway raves, or Loman unto Nevis bends, in olden love of clouds and dew, where Trosac unto Stirling sends greetings that build the years anew. Out where her miles of heather sweep, her dust of legend in his breast, neath aged Dryburg's isle and keep, her wizard Walter takes his rest, and her love ploughman, he of air, more loved than any singer loved by a heart of man amid those rare high souls the world hath tried and proved whose songs are first to heart and tongue wherever scotsmen greet together and far out alien scenes among go mad at the glint of a sprig of heather and he her latest wayward child her lewis of the magic pen who sleeps by tropic crater piled far far alas from mystic glen who loved her knew her drew her so beyond all common poets whim in dreams the wops are calling low in sooth her heart is woe for him and they her warriors greater none e'er drew the blade of daring forth her colin under indian sun her donald of the fighting north or he her greatest hero he who sleeps somewhere by nilus's sands Great Gordon, mightiest of those free, great captains of her fighting bands, yea, these and myriad and myriads more, who stormed the fort or ploughed the main to free the wave or win the shore, she calls in vain, she calls in vain. Brave sons of her, far severed wide by purpling peak or reeling foam from western ridge or orient side she calls them home she calls them home and far from east to western sea the answering word comes back to her our hands were slack our hopes were free we answered to the blood the stir the life by kelpie lock was dull the homeward slothful work was done we followed where the world was full to dree the weird our fates had spun we built the brig we reared the town we spanned the earth with lightning gleam we ploughed we fought mid smile and frown where all the world's four corners teem but under all the surge of life the mad race fight for mastery though foremost in the surge and strife our hearts went back went back to thee for the Scotsman's speech is wise and slow, and the Scotsman's thought it is hard to ken. But through all the yearnings of men that go, his heart is the heart of the northern glen. His song is the song of the windy moor, and the humming pipes of the squirreling den. And his love is the love of the shielding door, and the smell of the smoking peat within. And no hap how much the alien blood is crossed with the strain that holds him fast, mid the world's great ill and the world's great good, he yearns to the mother of men at last. For there is something strong and something true in the wind, where the sprig of heather is blown, and something great in the blood so blue, that makes him stand like a man alone, yea, give him the road and loose him free. He sets his teeth to the fiercest blast, for there is never a toil in a far country, but a Scotsman tackles it hard and fast. He builds their commerce, he sings their songs, he weaves their creeds with an iron twist, and making of laws or writing of wrongs, he grinds it all as a Scotsman's grist. Yea, 
There by Crag and Moore she stands, this mother of half a world's great men, and out of the heart of her haunted land she calls her children home again. And over the glens and the wild sea floors she appears so still as she counts her cost. With the wops low calling over the moors, woe, woe, for the great ones she hath lost. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lazarus of Empire by William Wilfred Campbell, read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. The Celt, he is proud in his protest. The Scot, he is calm in his place. For each has a word in the ruling and doom of the empire that honours his race. And the Englishman, dogged and grim, looks the world in the face as he goes. And he holds a proud lip, for he sails his own ship. And he cares not for rivals nor foes. But lowest and last, with his areas vast, And horizons so servile and tame, Sits the poor beggar, colonial, Who feeds on the crumbs of her fame. He knows no place in her councils, He holds no part in the word, That girdles the world with its thunders, When the theat of Britain is heard. He beats no drums to her battles, he gives no triumphs her name, but lowest and last, with his areas vast, he feeds on the crumbs of her fame. How long, oh how long, the dishonour, the servile and suppliant place, are we Britons who batten upon her, or degenerate sons of the race? It is souls that make nations, not numbers, as our forefathers proved in the past. Let us take up the burden of empire, or nail our own flag to the mast. Does she care for us, value us, want us, or are we but pawns in the game, where lowest and last, with our areas vast, we feed on the crumbs of her fame? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Holyrood by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Lady K. July 21st, 2017 Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada 1897 I stand in Edinburgh, in Holyrood, where Scotland's Mary flaunted, Iron knocks came, with cavernous eyes and words of prophet flame, and broke her soul as bonds of brittle wood, and all stern Scotland's evil and her good, her austere ghosts, her souls of fiery shame, her adamantine passions none could tame, arise anew and drip in Rizzio's blood. Here in these walls, these guilty corridors, Beside that bed where Elizabeth's eyes looked down Across the centuries with their fading band Of angry years of Presbyterian frown I only know these tears of weird remorse The woman rules, all else is shifting sand Footnote for Beside That Bed In Queen Mary's bedroom in Holyrood A portrait of Queen Elizabeth hangs on the wall above the bed Footnote for these tears, it is said that Knox, during this memorable interview, made the Queen weep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Unabsolved by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Unabsolved A Dramatic monologue this poem is founded on the confession of a man who went with one of the expeditions to save sir john franklin's party and who 
being sent ahead, saw signs of them, but through cowardice was afraid to tell. O oh, father, hear my tale, then pity me, for even God his pity hath withdrawn. O oh, death was dread and awful in those days. You prayed of hell and punishment to come, and endless torments made for those who sin. Stern priest, put down your cross and hearken me. I see forever a white glinting plain, from night to night across the twinkling dark, a world of cold and fear and dread and death, and poor lost ones who starve and pinch and die. I could have saved them, I, yea, even I. You talk of hell. Is hell to see poor frames, wan, leathery cheeks, and dull, despairing eyes, from whence a low-flamed madness ebbing out goes slowly deathward through the eerie hours? To hear forever pitiless icy winds feel in the shivering canvas of the tent with idle brute curiosity nature hath while out around one universe of death stretches the loveless hearthless arctic night this is my doom it sitteth by my side and never leaves me through the desolate years go take your hell to men who never lived save as the slow world wendeth sluggish dull even they must suffer also poor bleak ones then is your feeble comfort nothing worth you tell me to have hope god will forgive o oh, priest can god forgive a sin like mine you say he is all loving did he lie with me that night amid the eyeless dark and writhe with me and whisper save thyself that way to north lies cold and age and death an awful failure on men's odd tongues to linger years hereafter southward lies home heat and love and sweet blood pulsing life life with its morns and eves and glad tomorrows and joy and hope for many days to be did he i say lie with me there that night and know that awful tragedy beyond and my poor tragedy enacted there then must he feel him since as i have felt and live that hideous misery in his heart and knowing this i say unto thee priest he could not be a god and say forgive you plead my soul's salvation the one end and aim of all my thought then hearken priest for this my sin hath made me more than wise that seems to me the one great sin i sinned in selling all to save mine evil self stay hearken priest and haunt me not with hopes as futile as those icy fingered winds that stirred the canvas there that arctic night i bid thee hark and mumble not thy prayers like august bees heard in a summer room that drone afar but keep them for the dead the dull ear dead who sleep and heed them not then hearken priest and learn thee of my woe for i have lain afar on northern nights by star-filled waste and conned it o'er and o'er and thought on god and life and many things in all the baffling mystery of the dark and i have held that awful rendezvous 
of naked self with self alone and bare and knew myself as men have never known have fought the duel flashing hilt to hilt and blade to blade of flesh and spirit there until i lay a weak and wounded thing like some poor mangled bird the sportsman leaves writhing and twisting there amid the dark you talk of ladders leading up to light of windows bursting on the perfect day of dawns grown ruddy on the blackest night yea i have groped about the muffled walls and beat my spirit's prison all in vain only to find them shrouded fold on fold and still the cruel icy stars look down and my dread memory stayeth with me still it was a strange mad quest we went upon to seek the living in the lifeless north for days and days and long lone loveless nights we set our faces toward the arctic sky and threaded waste of that lone wilderness beyond the lands of summer and glad spring beyond the regions kind of flower and bird past glint horizons of auroral gleams a haunted world of winter's wizened sleep where death a giant aged and stark and wan kept fast the entrance of those sunless caves where hides the day beyond the icy seas long day by day a desolation went where our wan faces fared o'er all that waste and i was young and filled with love of life and fear of ugly death as some weird black the enemy of love and youth and joy a lonely ruined bridge at edge of night fading in blackness at the outer end and those were cold stern men i went with there who held their lives as men to hold a gift not worth the keeping men who told dread tales that made a madness in me of that waste and all its hellish lonely solitude and set my heart a-beating for the south until that awful desolation ringed my reason round and shrunk my fearful heart yea father i had saved them but for this why did they send me on alone ahead poor me the only weak one of that band who was too much of coward to show my fear why did life give me that mad fear of death to make me selfish at the very last why did god give those men into my hand and leave them victim to a craven fear that walked those lonely waste in form of man no father take your cross mine is a pain that only distant ages can outburn forgiveness no you know not what you say you churchmen mumble words as charmers do and talk of god and love so glib and pat and think you reach men's souls and give them light when all the time my spirit is to you a land unfound a region far removed where walk dim ghosts of thoughts and fears and pains you never dreamed of what know you of souls like this of mine that hath girt misery some and found the black with which god veils his face you say the church absolves you speak of peace you talk of what not even god can do but he but what you make him in my light and mine is light of one who knows the case the facts the reasons and hath weighed them too 
there is but one absolver, the absolved. For I, since that far, fatal Arctic night, have been alone in some dread shadowy court, where I was judge and guilty prisoner too. Words, words are empty. Were life built on words, how rich the poor would grow, the weak be strong, the hateful loving and the scornful weak. The king would be a peasant, and the poor a king in his own right. The murderer, red from his foul guilt, would pass to God's own breast. And all damned things, long damned of earth's consent, in some dread law, much older far than we, would blossom righteous under heaven's face. Still fared we north across that frozen waste of icy horror ringed with awful night to seek the living in a world of death. And as we fared, a terror grew and grew about my heart like madness till I dreamed a vague desire to flee by night and creep by steel blue windless plain and haunted wood and wizened shore and headland once more south there as we went the days grew wan and shrunk and nights grew vast and weird and beautiful walled with flame glories of auroral light ringing the frozen world with myriad spears of awful splendor there across the night and ever anon a shadowy spectral pack of gleaming eyes and panting lurid tongues haunted the lone horizon toward the south then life ebbed lower in the bravest heart and spake the leader if in ten more days we chance on nothing then will we return and set our faces once more to the south for that dread land began to close us in with cold and hunger bit at our poor limbs till life grew there a feeble flickering flame amid the snows and ice flows of that land then ten days crept out shrunk and gray and wan with nothing but the lonely haunted waste then spake the leader if in five more days then parceled out those five gray haggard days while life to me grew like an ebbing tide that surged far out from some dread death-like strand and horror came upon me like the night that seemed to gird the world in desolate walls then spake the leader if in three more days but when the third day waned we came at last unto the shores of some dread lonely sea that gloomed to north and night and far beyond where ruined straits and headlands loomed and sank there seemed the awful endings of the world then spake the leader let us go not yet but stay a little ere we turn us south perchance poor souls they might be somewhere here and then to me you go for you are young and strong and life throbs quickest in your veins and you have eyes more strong to see for ours are dimmed by the dread frost mist of this land and creep out there beyond yon gleaming ledge and bring me word of what you there may see and if you meet no sign of master sail or hull or wreck or mark of living soul then we will turn our faces to the south for this great ocean's vastness hems us in and death here nightly creeps from strand to strand and binds with girth of black the gleaming world then whispering madness 
madness to the dark i crept me fearful o'er that gleaming ledge and saw but night and awful gulfs of dark and weird ice mountains looming desolate there and far beyond the vastness of that sea and then o oh god why died i not that hour amid the gleaming flows far up that shore so far it seemed that man's foot scarce could go the certain tapering outline of a mast in one small patch of rag and then i felt no man could ever live to reach that place and horror seized me of that haunted world that i should die there and be froze for a amid the ice core of its awful heart then crept i back the weak ghost of a life a miserable shaking coffined fear and spake i saw but ice and winds and dark and the dread vastness of that desolate sea again he spake creep out once more and look perchance your sight was misled by the gleam and then once more i crept out on that ledge and saw again the night and awful dark and that poor beckoning mast that haunts me yet and as i lay those moments seemed to grow as men have felt in looking down long years and there i chose twixt evil and the good and took the evil then began my hell and back i crept with that black lie on lips and spake again i only saw the night and those weird mountains and the awful deep at that he moaned and spake poor souls poor souls then they are doomed if ever men were doomed whereat a sudden great auroral flame filled all the heaven lighting waste and sea and came a wondrous shock across the world like sounds of far-off battle where hosts die as if god thundered back mine awful lie and i fell in a heap where all was black when next i lived we were full three days south and two had died upon that dreadful march the memory came and i went laughing mad but kept mine awful secret to this hour no priest you can do nothing pain like mine must smoulder out in its own agony till there be naught but ashes at the last but something mid the pauses of the dark doth teach me that i am not all alone for i have dreamed in my dread maddest hour an awful shadow blacker than my black went ever with me hearken to me now i never felt a hand or saw a face i never knew a comfort more than sleep the winters they are only barren snows and age is hard and death waits at the last but i have felt in some dim shapeless way as memories long remembered after youth that back of all there is some mighty will beyond the little dreams that we are here beyond the misery of our days and years beyond the outmost system's outmost rim where wrinkled suns in awful blackness swim a wondrous mercy that is working still end of poem this recording is in the public domain Her Look by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen Time may set his fingers there, Fix the smiles that curve about her winsome mouth, And touch her hair, Put the curves of youth to rout, 
but the something god put there that which drew me to her first not the imps of pain and care not all sorrows fiends accursed can kill the look that god put there something beautiful and rare nothing common can destroy not all the leaden load of care not all the dross of earth's alloy better than all fame or gold true as only god's own truth it is something all hearts hold who have loved once in their youth that sweet look her face doth hold thus will ever be to me joy may all her pinions fold care may come and misery through the days of murk and shine though the roads be foul or fair i will see through love's glad inn that sweet look that god put there end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wayfarer by william wilfred campbell read for LibriVox .org by kathleen he woke with the dawning met eyes with the sun and drank the wild rapture of living begun but he went with the moment to follow the clue ere the first red of dawning had drunk the blue dew follow him follow him where the world will under the sunlight by meadow and hill down the blue distance round the world's rim where the hosts of the future are horning for him follow him call to him pray to him sweet tell him the morning is fresh for his feet sing him the rapture the glamour the gleam of pearly dew azure that curtains the stream sing the glad thrush note that never knew pain but sing him and call him and pray him in vain for ere the red dew-drop in sunlight was pearled he heard that mad ocean that whelms the world yea heard that voice calling past sunlight and dew that rarest alluringest ever heart knew that siren of sunrise that weaver of songs till the heart of man hearkens and gladdens and longs till o'er the blue distance as opens the rose the yearning impulsion of all his life goes and many a dragon chimera so grim down the dream of the morning is vanquished by him yea sing to him call him through heartache in vain but the gladdest day wakened to glory must wane and the noonday he longed for to fierce light will burn and the battles he wages grow bitter and stern and the surge of life sink to the moan of a bar and the hopes of the morning grow hollow and far and the road that he follows less luring and true till he longs for a whiff of the morning he knew for he hears thy far singing that lures not in vain till he comes to thy beauty of dawning again but the roads of returning are never the same as the sweet dewy meadows of morning we came but the song of alluring is ever as true to lead the heart back to the beauty he knew and vain the mad magic where life's glories burn for the heart of the yearner who longs to return for he hears that voice calling voiced never in vain to world heart a weary for all dreamings fain and he hears the low grasses the green tents of sod from roof trees of slumber as voices of god and the spinning and turning of madness amain fade out from his dreaming as night from the pain when the rosy red splendor in dew dreams impearled from ashes of slumber lifts over the world yea back from those echoes of bugles that blew heart weary life broken he wanders to you yea back to his truest those far broken gleams of that rosy red morning lit house of his dreams where all hours were splendid and all hearts held true in those glory lit visions of beauty and you yea call to him cry to him mother of all you lit his youth's torches you saw their flames fall you loved him upheld him this child of thy breast and now give him surcease in dreamings and rest thy note was the one note he heard in the fray that bore him far out in the heat of the day thy call is the one call that beckons him home when day fires darken by forest and foam when o'er all the heartache the visions untrue love draws her dim curtains of dusk fire and dew while the bells ring for slumber as out of the deep completing those velvet winged spirits of sleep and there at thy doorways of slumber he stands like him of old horeb and sees his heart's lands and under the white awe of planets that swim knows dawning and even as one world to him
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Ottawa by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Lady K. July twentieth, two 2017 Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada Out of the northern wastes Lands of winter and death Regions of ruin and age Spaces of solitude lost You wash and thunder and sweep and dream and sparkle and creep turbulent luminous large scion of thunder and frost down past woodland and waste lone as the haunting of even of shriveled and wind moaning night when winter hath wizen the world down past hamlet and town by marshes, by forests that frown, brimming their desolate banks, your tides to the ocean are hurled. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Departure by William Wilfred Campbell. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Departure Old house now ruined, wrecked and gray, Home once enshrined of love's delight, And all glad promise of the May, Now hushed in shades of wintry night. Once garment of a thousand loves, Now but a shroud of glooming stone, While sad October moans and roves, Old house, old house, we are alone. We are alone, yea, you and I, Who dreamed old summers in their prime, Now sad and late to see them die Along this ruined verge of time. Old rooms now empty, once so bright, Staircases climbed of gladdening feet, Dark windows erstwhile filled with light, Where now but rains of autumn beat. Where now but lorn months call and call, And sea and gust and night complain, With ghost boughs shadowing on the wall, Or dead vines knocking at the pane. Old place, whose ceilings, walls, and floors, Still redolent of love and may, Once more, once more I leave your doors, Into the night I take my way. Huge yawning hearths, once flaming bright on many a well-loved face and form long gathered out into the night to meet the vastness and the storm into the night where i too go beyond your sheltering walls and doors where death's october drives his woe over a thousand midnight moors beyond your sheltering where i beat to sleep with stars of dark or gleamed, Or breast the night of moan and sleet, To meet that morn a world hath dreamed. Hath dreamed? Hope hungering heart hath read, And caroled morning lifted lark, Yea, back of all this muffled dread, Perchance some splendor rifts the dark. Yea, though no magic reach its gleams, nor heart of doubting prove it true. Old house, beloved, of my dead dreams, while I go forth from love and you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Phaethon by William Wilford Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Bars Phaethon, I, Phaethon, dwelling in that golden house, which Hephaestos did build for my great sire, old Helios, king of glowing heaven and day, knowing his life but mortal in its span, hedged in by pulling youth and palsied age, 
where poor men crawl like insects knowing pain and mighty sorrows to the gates of death besought the god my father by his love to grant me that which i did long for most of all things great in earth and heaven and sea the which he granting in his mighty love of all things splendid under the splendid sky built of old by toil of ancient gods to me the dearest for one round golden day to stand in his great chariot built of fire and chase the rosy hours from dawn to dusk guiding his fleeting steeds o'er heaven's floors he gave to me no god yet break his word speaking to me in sorrow o oh, my son know what thy foolish pride hath made for thee that mortal life which is to men a span from childhood unto youth and manhood's prime reaching on out to happy olden age for thee must shrink into one woeful day for o oh, my son impetuous in thy pride who would be as the gods and ape their ways and sacrilegious leave thy mortal bounds know thou must die upon that baleful day that terrible day of days thou mountest up to ride that chariot never mortal rode and drive those steeds that never man hath driven then i my father know me thine own son better to me to live one day a god going out in some great flame of death than live in this weary life of common men misunderstood misunderstanding still half wakeful moving dimly in a dream confused phantasmic men call history chasing the circles of the perishing suns the summers and dim winters hating all heart eaten for longing ne'er attained despising all things named of earth or heaven or mortal birth that they should ever be knowing within this mystery of my being this curbed heredity lies a latent dream of some old vanished banished lease of being when life was life and man's soul lived its hour uncurbed uncabined like the mighty gods vast splendid capable and herculean to drain the golden beaker of his days thus i my father i am over weary chained in this summer plot of circumstance beaten by fearful custom childish chidden hounded of cruel wolves of superstition and rounded by a petty wall of time plodding the dreary years that wend their round aping the sleeping sensual life of beasts fearful of all things dreaded mostly death past pain and age and all their miseried end where all must rot who smile and weep and sleep and be a part of all this grim corruption nay better to me than the long measure draught trickling out through many anxious years iron eaten haggard to the place of death to drain my flagon of life in one glad draught to live to love aspire and dare all things be all i am and others ought to be real man or demigod to blossom my rose to scale my heights to live my vastest dream to climb to be and then if chance my fate to greatly fall then my great father 
laden with woe divine my son take thou thy way as thou hast chosen thus twill be to thee and passing darkened down his godlike face and shadowed splendor thence for evermore twas night ambrosial down the orient meads with stars like winking pearls far studding heaven and dews all glorious on the bending stem odorous passionate as the rose of sleep half budded on the throbbing heart of night and in the east a glowing sapphire gloomed when i awoke and lifted up mine eyes and saw through rose and gold and vermil dyes and splendid mists of azure hung with pearl half hid half seen as life would apprehend as in a sleep the presence of dim death and fate and terrible gods the car of day like morn within the morning glad it hung light hid in light swift blinding all who saw dazzled its presence motionless though vibrate where it did swing athwart the deep welled night the heart of morning in the folds of dark pulsating sleep and conquering death with life so glowed its glory folded cloud in cloud gold within azure purple shunt in gold the bud of morning pulsing ere it break and spill its splendors many vermil died reddening ocean to his outmost rim here charmed dreams and drowsed magic hung and winged hopes and rosy joys afloat filled all the air and i was quick aware that this was life and this mine hour supreme to seize and act and be one with the gods so dreamed i reckless when to think to act and moved elate with swift life flaming steep athwart the meadows budding asphodels song on my lip and life at heart and eye exultant breathing flame of pride and power joy rose and sang a bird across the fields hope's rosy wing shot trembling to the blue and courage with dauntless steps before me went brushed with veils of fierce cobwebby fires and there before me sprawled grim ancient power a hideous ethiop huge in sodden sleep the golden reins clutched in his titan hands i snatched leaped shouted morning rose in flame and ashweed paled to lily lily blushed to ruddy crocus crocus flame to rose and out of all born on the floors of light i floated gloried up the orient walls and all things woke and sang of conquering day higher yet higher out of fiery mists filling those meadows of the dew-built dawn gloried and glorying power clutched in my hand wreathed about in terrible splendors i drave glowing the dawn's gold coursers champing steam of snow and pearly foam from golden bridles forged in blue idolian forges of the night beaten on steely anvils of the stars these champing reared their fetlocks breathing flame in red dew-draining lances thundered on whelming night as golden stair by stair they climbed the glimmering bridgeway of the day far under wreathed in mists old ocean swayed and cyclops like the bearded mountains hung vast shining rivers with their brimming floors and broad curved courses gleamed and glanced and shone and loneliness and gloom and gray despair with sombre hauntings fled to shuddering night 
hidden in caves and coral glooms of seas low down the east the morn's ambrosial meads sank in soft splendors sphering out below gilded in morning anchored the patient earth mountain and valley ocean and wide plain opening to dawn's young footsteps where we wheeled and blossomed wide the rosebud of the day glory was mine but greater sense of power nor marred by fear as loftier we climbed with glinting hooves that clanged the azure bridge that arched from dawning up to flaming noon dauntless my soul and fiery glad my heart and vastness vastness sang through all my being as gloved with adamant i guided on the day's red courses up their flaming hill to reach the mighty keystone of the day all things conspired to build my upward road the fitful winds of morning the soft clouds that fleece like swept my cheek the azure glint of ocean swaying restless on his rim where slept the continents like a serpent curled in sleep leviathan huge about the world then sudden all my waking turned to dream a madness wherein hideous all things hung thought fled confused and awful apprehension shadowed my spirit power and reason fled and maddening day's red courses thundered on uncurbed unguided by my palsied hand then with loud ruin blundering from the bridge through space went swaying now high up now down scattering conflagration and fierce death o'er earth shrunk verges from their scorching scarred time fled in terror forest shriveled up ocean drew back in shudderings to his caves huge mountains shook and rumbled to their base great streams dried up old cities smoked and fell and all life met confusion and despair and dread annihilation then the gods pitying wrecked nature in their sudden vengeance me impious hurled from out my dizzying height time vanished reason swooned then left her throne and darkness wrapped me as i shuddering fell oblivion clouded to the plunging seas ocean received me folding in her deeps cooling and emerald here in coral dreams i rest and cure me never wholly waking filled with one splendor fumbling in a dream as waves do fumble all about a cave for one clear memory of that one high day i failed was mortal where i climbed i fell but all else little matters life was mine i dreamed i dared i grappled with i fell and here i live it over in my dreams all things may pass decline and come to naught death whelm well, life as day engulfed in dark but i have greatly lived have greatly dared and death will never wholly wrap me round and black me in its terrors i am made one with the future dwelling in the dreams and memories dread of envious gods and men end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Humming Bee by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte Glad music of the summer's heart Jargoning from flower to flower A part of each unconscious hour Until the happy days depart Thou dream-like toiler of the fields, 
each honeyed spot thou knowest well where nature's heart her sweetness yields some ruined trunk thy citadel there buildest a home for winter's hour in some lone sunlight haunted place when all the year is at its power and june's high tide on bank and bower mirrors in blossoms nature's face at early morn by breathing wood or in some dewy clover dell tuning the young day's solitude or down the slumbrous afternoon rich freighted wingest thy tuneful way self musing murmurous musical amid the whole world's dreamy swoon sole voice of all the drowsed day until the gradual shadows fall then by some lonely pasture fell at ruddy eve when homeward come past deepening shade or fading ray the weary children of the day i hear thy joyous drowsy hum till stars peep out and woods breathe low and sounds of human toil grow dumb and night the blessed comes apace bending to earth's her cooling faith while airs across the dark outblow then rocked on some glad blossom's breast thou dreamest to rest when summer wanes to autumn's age and come the days of fate and rage o oh, happy humming bee then wilt thou sink to wintry sleep when storms are hoarse along the deep in hushed tranquillity no more wilt wind thy subtle horn by dreamy eve or misty morn when trees are leafless pastures shorn ah me ah me could we like thee go down the days of summer hush to autumn haze housing with what we built before the gold of all our memories store and garnered thought so when the bleak december's hate beat round the bastions of our fate we wrapped in wealth of honeyed dreams of kindlier visions far off streams might heed it not end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Children of the Foam by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Children of the Foam Out forever and forever Where our tresses glint and shiver On the icy moonlit air Come we from a land of gloaming Children lost forever homing Never, never reaching there Ride we, ride we ever faster driven by our demon master the wild wind in his despair ride we ride we ever home wan white children of the foam in the wild october dawning when the heaven's angry awning leans to lakeward bleak and drear and along the black wet ledges under icy caverned edges breaks the lake in maddened fear in the woods and shore are moaning then you hear our weird intoning mad late children of the year ride we ride we ever home lost white children of the foam all gray day the black sky under where the beaches moan and thunder where the breakers spume and comb you may hear our riding riding you may hear our voices chiding under glimmer under gloam like a far-off infant wailing you may hear our hailing hailing for the voices of our home ride we ride we ever home haunted children of the foam and at midnight when the glimmer of the moon grows dank and dimmer then we lift our gleaming eyes 
Then you see our white arms tossing, our wan breasts the moon embossing, under gloom of lake and skies. You may hear our mournful chanting, and our voices haunting, haunting, through the night's mad melodies, riding, riding ever home, wild white children of the foam. There, forever and forever, will no demon hate dissever, peace and sleep and rest and dream. There is neither fear nor fret there, when the tired children get there, only dews and pallid beam, fall in gentle peace and sadness, over long surcease of madness, from hushed skies that gleam and gleam. And the longed-for, sought-for home, of the children of the foam. There the streets are hushed and restful, and of dreams is every breastful, with a sleep that tired eyes wear. There the city hath long quiet, from the madness and the riot, from the failing hearts of care. Balm of peacefulness and gliding, dream we through our riding, riding, as we homeward, homeward fare. Riding, riding ever home, wild white children of the foam. Under pallid moonlight beaming, under stars of midnight gleaming, and the ebon arch of night, round the rosy edge of morning, you may hear our distant horning, you may mark our phantom flight. Riding, riding ever faster, driven by our demon master, under darkness, under light. Ride we, ride we ever home, wild, white children of the foam. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How One Winter Came by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo How One Winter Came In the Lake Region for weeks and weeks the autumn world stood still. Clothed and in the shadow of a smoky haze, the fields were dead, the wind had lost its will, and all the lands were hushed by wood and hill in those gray, withered days. Behind a mist, the blear sun rose and set. At night the moon would nestle in a cloud. The fisherman, a ghost, did cast his net. The lake at shores forgot to chafe and fret, and hushed its caverns loud. Far in the smoky woods the birds were mute, save that from blackened tree a jay would scream. Or far in swamps the lizard's lonesome lute would pipe in thirst, or by some gnarled root the tree toad trilled his dream. From day to day still hushed the season's mood. The streams stayed in their runnels shrunk and dry. Suns rose aghast by wave and shore and wood, and all the world with ominous silence stood in weird expectancy. When one strange night the sun, like blood, went down, flooding the heavens in a ruddy hue, red grew the lake, the sear fields parched and brown. Red grew the marshes where the creek stole down, but never a wind breath blew. That night I felt the winter in my veins, a joyous tremor of the icy glow, and woke to hear the north's wild, vibrant strains, while far and wide, by withered woods and plains, fast fell the driving snow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Beyond the Hills of Dream by William Wilfred Campbell